If you view stock charts for your market analysis, chances are you've used it the wrong way. Well, let's call it the less efficient way. In my opinion, the best way to use stock charts is not to predict what comes next, but really to use it as a form of risk management. Now, compared to all other forms of analysis, whether it's fundamental, economic, statistical, studying level two, technical analysis by far is the best tool for risk management, and that's where its strength lies. Now, most people, I understandably, wanna look at the charts and use it as a way to predict what comes next. I've been doing this a long time. In reality, always knowing what comes next is virtually impossible. And the best way is to, to know how to protect yourself when you're gonna be wrong. That's the difference between an analyst and a trader. You know, going beyond just trying to be right, but really trying to make money. If you take a look at all the different legends, you know, if you look at the Marco Wizards series, if you speak to any kind of professional trader, it, you'll see that even if they don't explicitly say it, it comes through in their words, it comes through in their stories about how they use the market, market data, technical analysis. They use it to confirm their thoughts. And they use it as a way to kind of backstop to see if they're, they're wrong. And that's really where the strength lies. So, you know, they will often bring into the analysis of, their, uh, of the market fundamentals, economics, they'll build a big picture. And then they'll say, okay, what is the market reaction? Is it confirming my thoughts or is it telling me something else? Let's take a look at a passage about, from Bruce Kovner from the Market Wizards series where he talks about how he uses the market reaction to figure out whether or not he should be buying the Canadian dollar or selling the Canadian dollar. If you look at the principles he's highlighting through this story, it really kind of brings to the surface how you should really be using these tools. And you know, as someone who's made many billions of dollars just trading from the markets, this is someone you should listen to. Let's see what he says. I would add that technical analysis can often clarify the fundamental picture. I will give you an example. During the past six months, I had good arguments for the Canadian dollar going down and good arguments for the Canadian dollar going up. It was unclear to me which interpretation was correct. If you had put a gun to my head and forced me to choose a market direction, I probably would have said down. Then the US-Canadian trade pact was announced, which changed the entire picture. In fact, the market had broken out on the upside a few days earlier as the, the negotiations were finishing up. At that instant, I felt completely comfortable saying that one of the major pieces in the valuation of the Canadian dollar had just changed and the market had already voted. Prior to the agreement, I felt the Canadian dollar was at the top of a hill, and I wasn't sure whether it was going to roll backwards or forwards. When the market moved, I was prepared to go with that movement because we had a conjunction of two important elements, a major change in fundamentals and a technical price breakout on the upside. So you see, Bruce Kovner really used the charts, the technical analysis, as a way to confirm his thoughts. If you, I mean, and if you stop and think about it, what really drives stock moves? I'm a chartist at heart. I'm the former president of the Canadian Society of Technical Analysts. I have my chartered market te technician designation. But I have to admit, at the end of the day, what moves a stock higher over time is not the chart. The chart is the representation of the demand and supply that underlies the stock. It's economics 101, you know, the demand and supply curves. What will ultimately propel a stock higher are the anticipated future earnings of the company, what interest rates are doing, and investor sentiment, how much they're willing to pay in this environment for those future earnings. It's not the stock chart itself. That really represents all the interaction of buying buyers and sellers. Now, it's important to watch all of these buyers and sellers because there's always going to be those who are more informed. Or even if the majority can be wrong for a certain period of time, but their buying power can move stocks a long ways before the actual fundamentals come to the surface. And so that's why it's absolutely critical to follow what everyone's doing, but the most effective way to use charts is actually as a risk management tool. Is what you think is gonna happen, happening. Or, or if things reverse, you know quickly that you're wrong. If you think this breakout is about to lead to this big advance and it comes back in, well, you know you're wrong. When you take this, this way of looking at charts, it's going to completely transform the way you look at all of your indicators. You're no longer looking at an indicator as this special, kind of combination of statistics or, or of price action, you're trying to understand what are buyers and sellers doing. So you can build a theory about why you think the stock is moving higher or whether or not it's under accumulation. And if that changes, you know you're wrong. You can get out, you can save your money, live to fight another day. So when you're right, you make a lot of money. And when you're wrong, you lose a little, uh, very little money. Now this is really, if you read the books like A Random Walk Down Wall Street, all of these different kind of academic papers that say, you know, technical analysis, or actually they'll say, all types of analysis can't predict the market. 
What they get wrong is you don't need to use these tools to predict what's gonna happen next. You really wanna use these tools to kind of really just confirm whether you're right or wrong. They're risk management tools. And when you look at it from that perspective, it's an entirely different discussion. And again, if you look at another billionaire, if we talk about William O'Neill, there's one of his, and he has a way of kind of always making things so simplified, uh, these concepts kind of bring them down to their simplest form, which is probably a sign of his genius. But if you look at what he says, he has the exact same approach. The whole secret to winning and losing in the stock market is to lose the least amount possible when you're not right. <clears throat> so as you can see, William O'Neill has that exact same thought process. As much as he's looking for these big winners, you know, he says the key is to not lose a lot when you're wrong. And that's a really major difference from how most people come to the market and how most people use their tools. So let's take a look at two examples of Apple and you'll see how this kind of approach to the market can result in a very helpful form of analysis to kind of use the charts in a different way. Let's take a look. So in June of 2021, you can see Apple is correcting to its prior support. Let's say, for example, you see a bright future for Apple. You see, you think it's new phones, the new services are gonna propel the stock much higher. Well, you're looking for upside confirmation to buy. So as you see the stock pulls back to prior support, once you get that trend line break, you begin buying. You figure the upside momentum is returning, the selling pressure is abating, and that normal correction is, is past course, and, and now you're preparing, you're positioning yourself for the next advance. A very similar setup occurs in October of 2022. You can see the stock corrected significantly. It pulled down to its prior support. You wait for a trend line to a break to occur, but this time, after a quick little rally, the stock fails, it falters. The, the conditions, the economic conditions are worse than what they were last year. 2022, interest rates are rising, inflation is a problem. There's a lot of uncertainty. Investors are not, are not willing to pay as high a price for the stock, so we fall lower. In the first example, in June of 2021, you never, you're never proven wrong. You buy the stock and it advances. In October of 2022, you assume that this prior support level where buyers were supporting the stock last time, we're gonna start to propel the stock higher. Upside momentum was reignited with the downtrend line break, but it didn't hold. That ability to react, to know when, oh, this time I'm wrong, is a superpower in the markets. It's what allows you to avoid taking large losses when you're wrong. So to be incredibly effective in the markets and with anything else in life, you have to know why you use each of your tools. That way you can use them to their greatest strengths and you can avoid some of their weaknesses. That's how I kind of bring everything together. So I have fundamental criteria I look at to find stocks with the most potential to advance. And then after I time those with technical analysis, I use technical analysis to control my risk and that's how I bring everything together. Now, interestingly, I was you know, a, just a diehard technician for years, even as a market maker. I mean, I would trade symbols. I'd know in, what industry they were in, but I would know nothing about the company. So I'm, I'm no stranger to using tech, purely technical analysis to make money. But over the years, as I just kind of begun to see markets differently, uh, approach the markets in the light of what is going on and when is this wrong? When, when is my theory failing so I can exit quickly? When I began to look at markets that way, I started to kind of transition away from some of my favorite tools like oscillators and, and other types of like indicators that people usually put below charts and spend more time focusing on the price action, reading the price action, almost like a musician will read uh, music notes. And so by studying that price action, it's a lot easier to come to a theory, to come to a, um, a thesis about, hey, this stock is likely being accumulated here. If it does this, it looks like buyers are returning. It's an easier way to kind of decide when to buy the stock, but even more importantly, you know very quickly when you're wrong. If I'm buying solely because an oscillator is oversold, it can stay oversold for an extended period of time, especially if a new trend is starting. Now, this, these are whole other discussions we'll maybe uh, talk about on another uh, video, but knowing again, like I said, the strengths and weaknesses of each of your tools, why you use them and how they're effective is really gonna help propel you to that next stage of analysis, that next stage as an investor. So that's kind of my journey about how I've transitioned over time and why I've eventually kind of adopted this philosophy to technical analysis. I'm curious, what tools do you use? Do the tools you use, are you able to kind of quickly know when you're wrong? How do you, how do you kind of bring that together? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Besides that, you can follow me on Twitter at trader underscore M Caruso. There's my website, carusoinsights.com, where I teach my approach to markets. Uh, we'll be back with some new videos. Until then, good luck trading.